<sighs> Good morning, Lord. Morning. How are you? Tired. Very tired. Busy night. Uh, uh, quite. <clears throat> Something you need to tell me about? Oh. <clears throat> no. Nothing to be of concern. Um, yourself, my lord? Did you rest well? A little bit. Just been thinking a lot, I guess. Uh, seems to be going around, to be honest. <laughs> People being retrospective. Mm. By the way, my lord, I noticed there's been some sort of gathering apparently taking place. There's been a lot of whispers in the streets. Oh? Hmm. Not sure exactly what's taking place, but it seems the nobles have uh, something happening. This isn't related to the tournament, is it? <clears throat> I don't believe so, my lord. Not by the intensity of the air I'm seeing. DM announcement. All players that are within the town would hear their town criers state that Nodis is massing over at the arena for the final tribunal of one of the infamous robber baron's soldiers known as Pasha. The town criers will spread this throughout the town and the townsfolk will begin heading towards the execution. Well, that's... Mystery solved, I guess. <clears throat> Execution or something. Mm. I should probably don my clothes and head over. <clears throat> I believe. Are you, are you close to this man? I know you two I... shared a cell for a well... bit. I was able to speak to him quite extensive. Yeah, a bit of a story. I heard some of it myself in previous years. <clears throat> I can understand why the man did it, to be honest. Though I cannot agree with the methods, to say the least. We watched him cave in Wo Slim's head. Brutally. <clears throat> he did that on purpose. I watched him. It's hard to feel completely bad for him. Mm. You walk around. Though I am afraid my occupation requires me to believe that no matter how bad a sinner can be, <clears throat> there's a chance of redemption. Though the path may cost one's life. We'll see what happens today, I suppose. If he's redeemed or not. Quite. I do hope only for the best for the man, but... <clears throat> if the voices of the, the suffering outweigh those who are benefited from it, and then, unfortunately, the, within the land of Grodia, blood is some, most of the times exchanged for blood. I tried to help him, but I'll admit it was a loose attempt at best. You are also in a very tricky position, my lord. Muddling hey, in this type Smithy. of affair can be dangerous. Very much oh, so. Uh, lord Smithy, uh, apologies, I still haven't quite gotten used to the name. Uh, you mind if I come back down to your shop later today? I need to get a knife reforged. <clears throat> I can have a look at it. We're a little still low on iron, but I can take a look at it. Ah, I don't have it on me. I'll have to bring it back around, no? Sure. If I'm not too busy, I'll see what Wonderful. I can do. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Of course. 
Hey, hey, good man. For a girl. A good man indeed. Never escape it, huh? <laughs> Unfortunately, life finds a way to have us <clears throat> tear through, so to speak, one hand at a time and crawl through it must be. Mm -hmm. But I've heard good things, at least of the tournament that took place. I heard uh, Harper won, actually, <clears throat> the bow tournament. I managed to watch a little of it before I got pulled away into other things. Yes, uh, that seems like quite a dilemma, to say the least. You're referring to Arca. Your father spoke of you of it. Hmm. Yes. By the way, how are you? Yes, I was there when the decision was made. <clears throat> I'm doing quite. I'm doing quite well. Mr. Spike here, look. <coughs> By the way, look who's back. I know. So I'm walking about this morning. And he's quite, well... Are you gonna give me a hit of that? Full of energy. Well, I mean, shit, man. I've got one bag oh, left man. today, so I need to get some more. <laughs> All this noise is hurting my head. Best thing to do is to distance ourselves oh. from them. <sighs> Truthfully. If whatever is going to occur is going to occur. <laughs> I feel like the sun has gone out. There's a oh, big shadow over me. Like a large there it is. A no, it's just very early How in are the you morning. Today? Charlie. Good morning. <clears throat> so far, feeling fine. The antidotes from yesterday works, so... Good, I heard about that. This is a common occurrence, unfortunately, for you. Like it's happened a couple of times. Only twice. But if it, if it happens twice, it's gonna happen more. I mean, I know it's not yours. So. Just means I have to keep my head on a swivel. What else is new, right? Exactly. <coughs> my lord, Sir Halstead. Good morning. How are you doing, Morning, Marcus? Marcus. How's the home? I had taken my leave last night. I guess when did you start Quiet, thankfully. You steal my smile, man. <laughs> Good. My armor is all banged up, but we don't have no, armor my lord. Parents, so I had to commission. When appropriate, I will need to speak to your father about my findings last night. Oh yeah, I do wear talk to him, but not me. Sort of, uh, sure, I'll let him know. You would be best to be present as well. <clears throat> well, when he gets a spare moment, we'll try and talk to him. You know how busy he gets. Those rare fleeting moments. I mean, you're wearing what? <clears throat> you know, yesterday was the first time it's I managed to just kind of talk and shoot the shit with him yeah. since he yeah. was, yeah, you, you know. <clears throat> That's good. Besieged. I'm, a, I'm happy to hear that. It's one thing being attention seeking. <laughs> Before Nithman. Oh, God. Right? That's, oh, that's gotta be tough. The man known as Pasha <coughs> or Exter will now take the stand now. and be judged uh, by his peers and uh, superiors. Just the man before you now stands accused of murder, treason, theft of noble property, extortion, terroristic actions against the legitimate rulers of the province. It is now the opposition will be heard and speak against the man's release. Oh, there is discourse. Corp yeah. Corporal Delhar, step forward. Mm. Going on? Go. Going to, uh... hmm. At least they're actually giving a fair chance this People time. were rumoring that there was just an execution, nothing more. Yeah. I mean, can you blame me with how the last one was went? That's fine. He's a, he's a good guy. Give him a chance, you know. He looks familiar. Ladies and gentlemen of notice, lords, ladies, my barons, before you stands a less than human man, a monster on the battlefield. 
one who I came into contact with multiple times on the front lines in the opposition against the robber baron. This man, this supposed man, knew no mercy. He took no prisoners. He was a violent and cruel beast of the highest order. A killer. Granted, all soldiers are killers. I will not deny this. But the atrocities this man committed are akin to that of a beast. There was no honor in how he fought. It was almost like he was trying to put on a show for people, and his reputation reflects that. Can we all agree? So I guess that's it for him. I have not much more to say. Yeah, I reckon. Other than the simple plea that you all see reason that this man had roles. Next up, we have Lord Gaspan Segano will be speaking. I did lose many brothers because of him. <coughs> Does anyone know who that is? The one on trial? No, the people Lord have noticed. Just showed up. Oh no! Any and all who believe the behavior. Of a criminal of this nature is warranted or sufficient hasn't a clue nor an idea of what it takes to lead and control a province and its people if every one of you did as this criminal has done this province would be a bloody mess murders left and right no leadership to take control no one would be safe This man, this bastard, has taken terrorist actions for no more than self-serving reasons, and it cost many their lives and their loved ones' lives as well. One Imperial, let alone a little girl, was not worth these actions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He must be executed as an example before all others, lest more will follow in his place. Hmm. Kill the Very bold statement, to say the least. Exception skewed a little, it seems. Is this an execution or is this a trial? Finally, uh, we inspector? have a Sergeant Kufoth, hmm. a prisoner of the robber baron. The post. Nice to get the chopping block out. I think his deeds outweigh whatever all this is. Might even shoot him in the head with a cross. No. With he all his deeds. I stole his son. I watched him do it. <sighs> he knew what he was doing, Marcus. <clears throat> He knew what it meant. Definitely seems like a trial. Radan Dynasty. And still, he wished for a Visara. Yeah, there's always time for redemption. What though. I say now speaks to her. There's not much time oh, And to expose the brutality really. of this man. At the time, by order of my lieutenant, I started to work alongside this Pasha. Attacking targets, merchants, alongside the roads. <clears throat> he had told me he was a man of skill. He did not tell me he was a man of brutality. Executions. <laughs> Executing prisoners of war. Attacking merchants, the innocent, but down without rhyme or reason. Seeing a spark of delight in his eyes as he cut down anyone who opposed him. I questioned it myself, but I had been told it would be for the greater good. But it is it was not. I saw in this man a killer. 
even in passing, even when not on the battlefield, he relished in his bloodshed, in the disregard for his fellow man. At times, he would speak mm. about how he wished to be ready to be free of that bitch that he was chained to. In this war, he showed his true colors, everyone. And, though I couldn't confirm it, word around the camps was that he would particularly may have played a hand getting that stolen black powder used to destroy that stalwart of the Imperium. <laughs> Where's the evidence for that? Citizens, make no mistake, I have sinned. I may have failed as a soldier. But something like this should not be allowed to continue. <clears throat> How slanderous and hateful. Mm -hmm. Peculiar, to say the least. But to prove otherwise is far too better a threat. The floor is now open for those who wish to come down and speak on behalf of saving this man's life. Are they mean responsible for the Starwood? So certain? Well, here's your chance. You speak so much of redemption, they've just opened the floor to people who want to save him. Hey, you can let the I'm man sure they already have the people who and the ghost speak is for him. These are individuals that have been prepped and very much given the time to prepare for this event. I've only written, been notified it happening now. My word wouldn't if go I far. If I knew about ways. this, I would. You fair people of Nautis. My name is Captain Eleanor of the Sordillo Company. Oh my. This man before you is no evil beast, no tyrant. Not someone who would go out of his way to harm somebody without a fairly good reason. I have worked alongside this man for far longer than most of you realize. He is... <laughs> would never harm innocent people. He is such a kind gentleman, a soul of which probably most of you here who know him would know he would never do these things that are claimed. Lies and slander. Him. Cal. have been stated here Never about who started. this man truly is, and he does not deserve to be executed. I beg fallen. you all, I beg you above to choose reason. Why would he do such terrible things if he has been nothing but supportive and helpful to those who have asked? He, yes, he went out of his way to help someone. Someone who he cared so deeply for. Someone who was... This man... deserves... forgiveness. That is all I have to say. But take my word... as a captain... As somebody who has fought alongside him, that he has never harmed innocents. Thank you. Care to disagree? Words without weight. No hard press to trust a mercenary's word. Is this words against words right now? Sordello Company reacts in our court. My opinion? This all they get's final say. That's his right. Sounds fair. Is trial by combat between Pasha and Custody. Unfortunately, most fair. Such rights are well, not go along unfortunately with the laws of Gradia. I am trial by combat. Accusing. 
unless the QZ has initiated shit, but he has not. On the front lines, He's allowing the law to decide his fate. The man speaking. Contracted to help in the war effort, where the town guard was spread thin. During a night raid on one of their encampments, he led a battalion of robber baron's men, rushing us, taking out many Uridad men in the process. However, when we became overrun, myself and a few others were cornered and without his assistance would have been left to die. He quickly told the other robber baron's men to go deal with other threats while he threw us off in the night, leaving us with no more than a warning. In fact, our own uh, leather worker, Tordi, was left in a tree surrounded by dozens of their men. And he decided to give up when he could have easily killed her or waited it out. I don't believe a man with getting shot at pure by malice would be willing to do something so forgiving. I hope you, uh, take this into consideration. Hopper fucking saved my life, he didn't. He's a knight. He doesn't kill women. <laughs> he was letting the others fucking chop down the tree to get at me. So, yeah, I guess uh, I, if I arrived late. Is it still? Mm -hmm. Seems like it's a certain amount of people speaking for and against him. He's going to chain me, make me a fucking slave. That's what he said. People of Norris and those who would judge this man. Of the crimes that he has been accused. And be aware of who you might be sentencing to death. Sir Exter, or as some people are aware of him as Pasha of the Robber Baron, is not a cruel Who's man, as some of the people who have come up here have said. He is a noble knight who serves his charge. To a fault. Oh, fuck off, Noble. You ran every chance you got. To a big fault. He will give everything in his power to make sure that he is able to protect and ensure the safety of who he is in charge of, who he fights alongside, and who he serves. That charge was taken by the people that he supposedly swore fealty to for the time he served. And the encounters that he had with the with the Radad soldiers out in the field. I have only heard of one count of brutality, and that was from the mouth of the men he betrayed. His true character is that of somebody who is selfless to serve a woman he is dedicated to. One who without retrieving we would not have been able to receive the help needed from the Imperium to push back the Robber Baron as far as we did. If it were not for the actions of this man, we would have had to combat his forces with what we already had. No assistance, no support, and many more would have died than already have been. He may have blended the lines between good and bad, the Radads and those in the woods. But who cannot say the same if they were not having to do so for people that they cared of? If one of the Baron's children, if they had any, were taken, what actions would the people loyal to them take in order to get them retrieved to make sure that they are fine? As far as I've seen, he's been multiple different groups, never deciding on which one keep this in mind loyalty when you make your judgment I can't even watch this he has no loyalty 
loyalty is anything but such reason they lie. I to take a stand and support them in things. There's a good compromise, I don't think they'll see. He's a capable fighter, was a lot of and he's done terribly. Have him fight the orcs. Ooh, well, that's an idea. And the goblins and any foul thing wants to kill us. You want to speak so fondly of him. Go up and speak. Say your piece. I'm mean, unable to already, as much as I would love to, truly. <laughs> Why? The crowd begins to speak among each other. Murmurs begin to turn into yells. Many voicing their frustrations and anger. Things begin to be thrown into the arena. As you watch as stones and rotten fruit thrown towards Exter himself and some even hitting. The rage echoing to these particular voices. Hope the people throwing things are careful not to hit those guards. People of Norris, honorable barons, I have been asked by the Lady Hyderman to speak on the events that led up to this, despite what repercussions may fall. Herself. I have only ever heard people speak praise of this man, no more so than the Lady Heidemann. When she confessed to me that she had placed all of her trust in this man, something that Lady Heidemann does not do. I knew that anything he would do for her, he would achieve it. So much so that when he approached me with a plan to save her Wait, what? I <clears throat> I helped him achieve this goal what? What? I am sure all of you are aware or if not most of you some time ago I was arrested He needed to prove himself to the robber baron that. Uh, so that he oh, may get close to save the Lady Heidemann. I allowed him inside of the clinic and I did not attempt to stop him when he escaped with whatever information mm. he needed. So again, My fate is already himself? sealed as decreed by the Inquisition, but I would ask that everyone here recognize the goal, the end of everything that has happened thus far. It is thanks to this man's actions that the robber baron's army progressed no further than that hill. It is thanks to his actions that this city, its people, were spared siege. It is thanks to his actions that despite previous testimony that I absolutely do not believe, the Imperium was allowed to re-enter to the field and avenge the stalwart. I do not for a moment believe that this man was responsible for it. I understand that many a good man has died, and these are regrettable losses, to be sure. If some punishment must be handed down, so be it. But I ask those who would judge this man to realize what his actions have brought us all. This dynasty has been allowed to survive. The people of this town have been spared the worst. We're all still here because of this man's actions. If there must be punishment, so be it, but let him live.
That's all. You chose him. That's right. You betrayed us. You chose him. It's more like we're still here despite Ladia's actions. He's already a dead man. Yeah, sure. He did everything to rescue her, and then imps were able to do their job. Congratulations. Why weren't they able to do their job in the first place? To my understanding, he's loyal to her. Yes. Seems like this was all done haphazard from the sound of it. So then she's partially responsible for his fate. This. Sir, As the crowd prepares for the final witness to come out, out steps into the arena. Ladia Heideman. Oh boy. Oh, she is speaking. Oh, I suppose she was just late on arrival. Foreigner. Mercenary. Butcher. Criminal. Treasonous. These are a view of the titles the man Richard Exter is now known by. Titles that were established in recent times and long ago and in the past. Are they accurate? Yes. Many are. Does each terrible crime deserve its own justice? Yes. This is the law. And the law must be fair. It must be just. Or there is no order. There is no sense of hierarchy. Of what is good. And what is evil? My name is Ladia Heideman, for those of you who do not know. I am an Imperial noble. My family has served the Empire long before my birth. My family's lineage, the Imperial annexed province of Leodor. Much like my grandfather, Luther, I followed in his footsteps in becoming a diplomat. Not because I wanted to, but because someone needed to pick up the slack and I was chosen to do and continue the work. He said, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Fuck you. I would not be in the position I am now had it not been for this foreigner, Exter. There is a story here for the purposes of the tribunal. I'm going to keep it very brief. A lot of what has already been said was said so by Fritz Ludwig. I was sent away from home. From Sunmore. It was just after the parade massacre. And according to my parents, it was for the benefit of my own health. Eventually, or forced to. I met Exter by chance, having found myself in Adwick within Ireland. It was just a passing hello, exchanging of directions, but soon enough, you become a regular at my bakery. Yes, let's not forget I was a baker. 
They're not a very good one. Despite being a disgraced knight, having no land, no wife to return to, as his father-in-law separated them both, he swore himself to me during the close of the first campaign against Arlandes and Imperials, despite his own brother and himself being Arlandi. He swore himself to me, my house. He even managed to beat the best swordsman of a tournament for me, an Imperial. He only did so because I asked him to try. He only did so after leaving and returning to my side to swear he would do his damnest to do right by me and respect my wish. As the war waged in Imperials and Arlandes fought for the right on the land, he swallowed his pride and made an oath to protect me, no matter the cost. He continued to serve his oath well, and as the years went by, through many hardships and close calls. He managed to keep me alive until I found myself here in Notis, until I found my purpose as a diplomat and a healer. Then the war came. The war took its toll on almost to the very walls of Notis itself. Oh my God, I didn't know this was a and then in my ignorance, I traveled to Blerno the town was starving. It was feast day. I did what I believe was right. Start with the history lesson. After Belerno was starved out during its war, I made the mistake in going with very few protectors. Civilians, no less, no imperial. I got captured by the Scarecrows, a branch, at the time, part of the Robber Baron. And of such a time where... I let them take me to let the others go. It's what I believed what was right. I was held in Tello for some time, as I awaited rescue, but none came. I don't blame anyone for coming. Security was doubled and I was always watched. Exter, now known as Pasha, watched me here and there. As Ludwig stated, it is true, he broke into the Imperial Clinic, stole what documentation he needed, presented them to the Scarecrows, and earned his place amongst the Royal Baron's men. He killed many a redoubt soldier. He humiliated the wolf. He butchered the custode's son. <laughs> he spoke ill of me, time and time again, whilst in the robber barons keep. Call me a spoiling, manipulating noble, and I completely fell for it and believed him. I had thought this man who had sworn everything to me. Then and there, I truly thought that it was all for nothing. I believed he had betrayed me, betrayed the people I cared for. Betrayed the barony, and greater still, betrayed his oath. How wrong I was. I watched as Pasha, with no hesitation, cleaved two robber baron women in half. They were not armed. Oh my god. 
They were carrying supplies. He what hurried me out the to the back door. Woman? He threw me up onto a horse. The horse was shot from underneath us. We continued to run into the crags, and through the crags, through a hundred orcs, through a hundred orcs to a wagon, which he arranged, Venora, of all people, an apothecary, to meet him in the woods. To get me back to Nottis. In doing so, doing, he was mortally wounded and I had no choice. He had to be brought back. I removed the helmet of Pasha and treated my knight with care, despite the terrible deeds committed. He had done it. He had fulfilled his purpose. It cost him his honor, his pride, and now his very life. All in service to me so that all may see it and know that I still breathe. His oath holding true. My barons and good people of Nottis, I must ask you two things before I step up into the arena, into the stands and watch justice be carried out. What would you have done? What would you have done to that which you cherish and love as your own? And will you be the ones to break this night's oath to me? For she who did not deserve such a promise. Let judgment be just, please. Weigh all deeds of the man fairly, so that when it is our turn, the same can be done for us all. In this life, or the next. Where's Custode? It is at this time that now that everything has been heard, the nobles will be taking a moment to convene and decide what is the fate of this man. Oh, it's not the people, sir. As the final witness in the testimony in favor of Exter begins heading up, the nobles begin to deliberate and very quickly, the crowd, all of the citizens of Nautis that stand in the stands of the arena and in the bleachers begin erupting in a furor of debate and argument, shouts calling for the immediate decapitation of the traitor, others favoring Miss Heidemann. And things begin to grow chaotic. The barons and the guards begin to try to wrest control from the crowd but things continue to grow wilder and wilder. Is he even awake? He... It seems like... Either it would either be service or execution. He served his oath faithfully, but death, he caused an undue death in the process. That's... My lord. One of the main reasons why I came out here. Because you hit the right. nail on the head immediately with this letter. I'm just getting too restless down there. Yeah, 
What do you think, my lord? Of what should happen to him? Hmm. At the way in, kind of deal. He was loyal just to the wrong thing. He was loyal to Ladia and he chose Ladia over the province. Unfortunately for him, the province decides what happens to him. How many people died by his hand? And then Uh, how would you judge the man? He knew what he was doing. He didn't do it with the intention of getting away with it. He knew he had to specifically be as terrible as possible to pull it off. He is a noble knight. I think he would prefer a death sentence over living in servitude to someone else other than Ladia. Or having the rest of his dwindling honor besmirched. Well, there is still the possibility to be freed of all charges. After having heard the testimony, the testimony from both from sides, both sides. And careful, and careful deliberation. deliberation. My brother and I have come to an agreement. The man Richard Exter is to be freed of most charges, but will pay restitution of no less than 247 silver to all families that were mentioned and impacted by his crimes. Failure to do so will result in imprisonment and a readjustment of the sentencing. Until such time as this debt is paid, Richard Exter will act in response to the dynasty's whims This court is adjourned. Oh my god. Oh, that was still time to do some good. Unexpected. I want you to know it's all because of you. Thank you, Barons. Of course. My Baron? I'm coming in, just going to whisper. A while ago, you would have asked us if we could show mercy to our countrymen. I think I've done as much as I could to aid that request that you had promised, that you had provided me. I'm sorry I could not do more. Thank you, my brother. Of course. You honor me. <laughs> Hold. We'll see you around. My brother and I have some paperwork to attend to. Very well. Have a good day. Should Lord you call me? Know hear am. ye, hear ye to all. Yeah. Soon the archery and arena yes. contests will begin. If you are wishing to partake or witness the festivities, be sure to stay around. Contestants, please begin to gather at the gates. Oh, what a day. It's only just started, Marcus. Well, since there's time to do some good, I want to show him, I want to see me and my skills and crossbow. It's my duty to witness you. You better serve us and do us proud. 
Perhaps you get the best seats in the house. <laughs> Maybe this time we'll be kicked off. Well, just got back from hunting. Hey. Unfortunately, so my lord, I do have de- duties sent to the castle I have to attend to for your father. I'll be stepping away momentarily. Of course. Then I shall be with you until I compete. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, man. When other people are going to see this. Good day, young lord. And you? Oh, uh, lady. Forgive me, I am at a disadvantage. I am not aware of your name. Samantha. Samantha. Pleasure. Lady Samantha, pleasure. And how are you today? Lady, it is most honored, honest to see you again. How are you well? I'm doing okay. Area around your wrists is raw and painful. It's red and it hurts. You are a Unfortunately, this was the lady I meant to rescue from the um, terrible man, the Knight Hartford. You're free to walk. <laughs> he still roams around. He's, Apologies, I I mean be, to uh, you up dispatch the soon, brigand. That would be wise. That would be good. Yeah, just got done with a hunting trip. I think he called it. <laughs> hunting trip. Right. I'll try my best for my lord and for you. I'll be cheering you on. I had to help. At least try to ease the punishment. I wish my knight would kind. treat me the way he did. <laughs> Yes. One that actually tries to be a knight. Men of honor are rare these days. And guardian around these twelve, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll try our best. So is I correct in here and you're entering the tournament yourself? Yes, a knight is always one to prove himself. Uh, should get that before we start to lose people. Well, good. I have someone to cheer for then. <laughs> yes. I'll try to secure the win and add another win to your name, as it were. <laughs> so are you dedicating it to me or to her? Oh, God. That's a tough one. The Chad move is just to kind of hand it off to you, right? That's, that's, but you're also my lord, so it's like, it's a tough one. I give uh, you permission to first, hand it I off understand. to whoever you seem to like more. How about that? But just be aware. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> if you are going to dedicate a win to one of our names, make sure you actually win. That would be very embarrassing if you don't oh. win. Because we're going to be talking you up. You're up right. There. We will be talking you up. No, and if, don't and, talk if, me and up. if you embarrass us. <laughs> The political implications would be d- terrible. Catastrophic. Catastrophic. The whole province in disarray. You're right. My but don't be nervous. Would be okay. Don't of... be nervous. Hmm? Oh, Just... yeah. Don't be nervous. It, it's it's not falling on your shoulders in the slightest. Just go out there and have fun. Yeah. If I lose, I'm heading out there, and I'll d- dispatch as many orcs until I fall. Not getting away that easily, <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> You saw uh, the night to fight. Right. Okay, well, <laughs> don't talk me up too much, all right, you bastard. You wearing my colors. Oh, by the way, did <laughs> anyone come grab the statue, by the way? Oh. Um, uh, what was that, sorry? It was Lady Samantha, what was that last uh, name? I Did anyone lied. actually come to grab the statue, or is it still taking up space? Oh no, it's, it's it's still there, and it's it's not taking up space. If anything, I've added finer touches to it. <laughs> so, I I hope he doesn't come by to check it. He had requested because he beat me uh, with the mace and he kicked my head in the last time. I remember. He wanted a statue of him with her like subservient to him, and I didn't do that at all. I made I made it of you You've with a cold. masked knight. Yes, uh, I'll be right back. Entering, yes, your name was on yesterday. Yes, sir. I think he's being taken. <laughs> Shall we? 
first. My lord, my lady. Quite so a morning. To join us, Lord Edward. Glad to be here. Oh yes, yes. Uh, a damn shame. Probably could have used him a bit more precisely, but it is the Baron's wisdom. Hmm. The extra silver would be handy, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, I suppose that did have a bit of a contributing factor to their considerations. Mm. And, if he fails to pay it, then they can do as they wish with the man. So, I wish him luck. <laughs> All the luck for him. I just hope he can pay it. Oh... Uh, He's a capable fighter, he'll find contracts or something. Well, I certainly hope they're consistent. Otherwise, uh, and I'm sure you know, Lord Edhart, the Barons are very particular about the coin owed to them these days. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so the Imperium to boot on everyone's neck, I would be too. Hmm, yes, an unfortunate side effect, but we will deal with it as is necessary. Speaking of, your father having any luck catching uh, whoever it was that perpetrated that murder a few days ago? It's a tough trail to follow, but we're doing our best. Hmm. So... Little to nothing. Mm. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, we're not omnipotent as much as we would like to be. <laughs> Things would run a lot smoother, I think. Oh, yes, I'm quite sure. If only. Oh, well. I suppose we are all in the end, not but mortal. Hmm. I'm sure the perpetrator will get brought out in time. <laughs> Wonder if we'll have another uh, trial. Oh yes, and this one will be a lot less forgiving, that is for certain. <clears throat> Assuming we don't just hand them over to the Sarkozy's. <laughs> well, at least the people can't say we don't enact justice. Well, I think you'll find there's a few people in this crowd that uh, don't believe what just occurred here was anything this close man, to justice. This man, I think, or did the was this rotten fruit gummy boy? Away? We've talked to him before. Uh, you should have heard them down there. They were yelling all kinds of things. Mm. Yes. The people are on the lookout for blood. Anything to distract them from their own ills. <clears throat> which seemingly keep piling up. <sighs> kind of hope this tournament would lighten the mood a bit, but apparently something happened yesterday. I missed it. Something with Dredge. Yes. Apparently so did I with my own business. He you ladies. seemed uh, off in the fight. I was here to see it. Hmm. Off. Um, that's a good way to describe it. Um, like he stopped using his anchor the big heavy one and went to an axe and towards the end of the fight when he won he just collapsed collapsed huh he was still yeah. conscious but it was like he just couldn't stand anymore 
So now we're I think he was from the negotiations. He was one of the baddies from the negotiations. Either the slave guy or the guy from <clears throat> Corsetto. Can't remember. Well, a matter to bring up with Lady Knows, I'll say. Presume if she's willing to even speak of that at all. <laughs> She wouldn't want to lose her coin purse, now would she? I haven't seen her around much. Hope she's doing okay. <laughs> I'm sure she's more than fine. How about you, Lord Erdart? You interested in getting into the arena? Fighting? Mmm. Mm, not really my well, cup of tea. No. Well, you and your father are trying to integrate within Nautis. What better way to do that than to partake in our great pastime? Hmm? <clears throat> hmm. And how did your fight go in the arena then? I must have missed it. Or it was before my time. <laughs> oh, please, Lord Hearts. Let's not trade such lowbrow wit. I, of course, mean as an investment. And buy yourself a slave or two. A few gladiators, uh, start yourself off. Sounds good. I understand. You that. see the murmurings in the crowd begin to grow louder as the contest looks like it's being ready to begin soon. <sighs> Finally. <clears throat> Any favorites down there, my lord, well, my lady? Hope that... Do either. Hmm. In the favorites? I was gonna ask the same thing. Uh, yes, uh, Sir Marcus Brucker is who I'm gonna mm. put my money on. Yes, the large one with the fancy armor. Well, he seems to be the most capable. Then again, I was told that a hobbit won the first contest yesterday. So who knows? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't the prize a giant warbo? How is he gonna? Yes, hey, Jazz King, can I get Balakir exactly. quickly inside the city? <laughs> I yes. assume he's going to sell it. <laughs> I would hope so, otherwise, like, it's a, more like a walking stick for him, isn't it? Essentially. By the way, but... maybe he can shoot himself. <laughs> Dredge could shoot him at someone, yes. <laughs> now that would be an arena act worth seeing. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, no, no. Fair is fair, but yes, I don't know what the little one is going to be doing with it. Uh. So do we know who the other contestants are? We are about like to see, I believe. Dredge is... no. Is he getting involved? <laughs> Easy. That would be a surprise to me. I didn't think like he wielded crossbows. Yes. Gross. Don't mm. Begin to watch as the guards begin to shift and move the logs and the barrels out to the field, to. prepping them up as the fighting will begin soon. Oh, looks like Sergeant Stefano is involved as well. Faces of those that many of you recognize within Stefano. the lineup mm. behind the doors. Well, if, that is, if there is a favorite on this field, I would put it in his hands. In Stefano? I've seen him shoot. Yes. Really? Yes. I'm just taking out many robber barons of men. Sure. Ah, yes, of course. <laughs> well, good then. You agree with me. Means we won't have to cross bets against one another. Oh, I didn't say he was my favorite, though. Ah, and there it then is. how much are you gonna bet? Well, we should make it interesting, shouldn't we? Of course. Uh, hmm. I did win yesterday after all by betting on the Hobbit. Aha, right. Well. I think. Let's see. 
I think for the contest, a bit of tin silver would be well worth it, don't you think? I can take that bet. Fine with me. Oh, Lord, that hurt. You have a spirit of gamemanship. Well then, we shall see. <laughs> and you would be betting on Stefano? Ten laps around the entire key. My lady. <laughs> if he intends to participate, otherwise he may just be instructed. Him. Otherwise, uh, let's see here. Half of you guards were in there. Was the only bet I won yesterday. I don't know this one in white. Who is that? She is a mercenary. Works for the mercenary guild. Yeah. You know her then. She in the good. Seen her around town. She's a pretty good shot. You don't have some kind of... You don't have... Yeah, uh, pretty good is not great. And great is what I am looking for. <laughs> yes. When they line up, we shall see. Oh. Yes, indeed. You ladies wish to uh, engage in the betting as well? Find your favorites. Maybe. If you want to enjoy it, you should live a little, my lady. Ah, excellent. Lord Blackwood. In the flesh. Uh, I am doing as well as can be, and that you could make it, along with your of course, I could not waste the rest of the I was most pleased to find out. And I think there's also an arena fight today afterwards. Oh, well, betting on Dredge, obviously. ...business regarding the champion. It has been... Safe bet. <clears throat> I don't even know if Trench is actually fighting. I'm glad to hear so. I don't know if he's recovering still from yesterday. Well, my second would be the wolf, and he's standing over there checking his You weapons. all watch as the first two competitors step forward to the guild. A man dressed with the Vipek armor and one of Verdad as they both begin to take their positions and prep their equipment. What was that? How's the time for bets, my lord? It's gonna be some competition. Lord Blackwood, do you care to partake? Hmm. Is there someone who has a place to bet upon? I suppose they wouldn't mind over the dark horse. Slowly but surely, you all watch as the first a place ten man begins to prep the his man. crossbow and take aim. Ten silver <laughs> on Sarkozy's man. <laughs> ah, good. We have ourselves a competition. So Cozy then. does like to surround himself hey, with the best of the best. Of the best. And with a quick, oh, decisive yes, movement, I'm he watches sure. the old guardsman <laughs> prep his shot. <laughs> and with a whistle through the air, the bolt rings out, landing near dead center with a 17 to the barrel. <laughs> not bad, not bad, not perfect. Lady knows us. But not bad. <laughs> Oh, Good day. Good day. Lady knows us. You watch as the Radod guard preps himself, taking aim. You can hear you know, the confidence in the man's voice as he lets loose his bolt as it whistles through the air, landing just slightly under where the last of the Peck guardsman hit with a 16. Very close. Damnation. <clears throat> this is going to be Most unfortunate, my lord. <laughs> Seems uh, you've made the wrong bet. <laughs> is this best yes. of three or something? You two, what's your name? Don't that that okay with It should be, <laughs> yes. No. Yesterday, they had a bit of work. That's it. Thinking you into there's only one left. Or something. Single you watch all as the Vipet guardsman mm -hmm. fumbles with the arrows covered in d sand as he slowly how many do they have? himself. You see his 
hips sort of take a slight wiggle mm. as he begins to take aim and fire. Is... I think six. Okay. Six. As the bolt sw- whistles through the air with a nine, mm. it collides just outside the ring <sighs> of the, the target. Ah, ah. Eh, the that's more what I was expecting. <laughs> eh? Not Blackwood. <laughs> <laughs> So I assume the Vipek is the favorite to win, yes? Uh, according to Lord Blackwood, he is. I favor the Rodot man, of course. We shall see. As one should. You all begin to see the, exactly. the Radad guardsman <laughs> prep himself the, the crossbow bolt place. As it whistles through the air, you can see a slight hiccup to him almost. And with a six, it goes wide, landing very far outside the target ring. <laughs> Bastardo. Oh, okay. With a six. Yeah. Oh. Oh, my God. Like Lord Sarkozy's men are handpicked by him alone. They are well, uh, well above the common goal. As the final round begins to play, yes, you well. watch as the Vepek guardsman begins to prep himself, they have so taking much his trouble time, focus in the man's eyes as he begins to narrow. Ah, the rumor. I suppose I guess it is not a rumor, but and with a whistle, the it soars through the sky, landing just slightly in the middle rings of the target with a twelve. What do you make of such a unfortunate circumstance, my boy? This sudden assassination of one of his men. I don't think there's any way for a dagger to catch up. No, it's quite simple. Someone wants to stir the pot, probably for their own good. The gods only know what that is. You watch as the Radad's Garvin preps he begins to take a, a sharp aim to his target. Who they're trying to point their sword at. And as the bolt whistles through the air <laughs> with an 11, landing just in the outer ring. The crowd begins to shout <sighs> as the nobles you, above Lord raise Lord. their hands to the winner to the hmm? Vipak Guardsmen. You all hear the nobles exchanging glee as some of them the begin to exchange <laughs> coin just among slaying themselves. Slaying a singular guardsman. Well, there's been a string of strange occurrences at this, uh... Winners, please step to the entrance to the right where you came, and losers, please exit the space in its entirety. Makes you wonder if they're connected. <laughs> Don't be a slow loser, you have plenty of heats to make back. You all watch as two familiar faces begin ah, to step this is the a good field. one. You talked of Stefano. Sergeant ah, Stefano, who <coughs> takes the field as well as Sir Marcus Brooker. Is not one of your men down there? It is, and I would be willing to put money on him. Lord Erdhard. Sergeant Stefano. Watchers and nobles begin to exchange with words and coin, even. As one of them raises their hand and allows the match to begin. Name, name it. Five silver. We'll start small. Ha! Very well. Five silver on Stefano. Five you silver on Marcus. So Brooker takes his position, taking his time for his shot. Yes, well, we can't expect And as the bolt whistles through the air with his unique on the crossbow, same level. you see it lands very low <coughs> to the post with a six <laughs> landing in the log itself. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, interesting. Good technique. Hmm? What can you say? You Can't all look to your the, the Sergeant Stefano begin to take place. His aim, his mm. his formation that he takes is perfect to many of your eyes who are unique with the skill. And as the bolt whistles through the air, landing with a 14 just under the middle ring of the targets. Nah, that's the way to do it, Stefano. <clears throat> Uh, uh, I wonder if his armor is getting in the way of a shot. That's that yeah, has to be what probably. it is. He's normally really good, probably. Of course. Right. So Brooker begins to take a pause of breath, and his aim begins to mark his target. You watch as his eyes narrow and focus, his hands steady. Come on, Marcus. And with a slight squeeze to the crossbow, you watch as the arrow whistles through the air and lands. Just under the bullseye with a 19. Ooh. Ah. There we go. Ooh. <laughs> Something interesting. Maybe I should be worried about taking Stefano out with me as protection. Oh, please. Give you him watch a as the sergeant begins to take his place, slowly taking a breath. 
as the final round begins. You watch as the bolt releases, whistling through the air, and with a 13 landing <sighs> just in the middle ring. Respectable. Ugh. It's not yes. a bad shot, let's be honest. It's not a great shot, let's be honest. And so Marcus Booker takes his last shot, prepping on, himself. His eyes begin to focus. <laughs> And with a quick release of a whistle of the bolts, it lands with a 13 in the middle ring area. Ending the match, winner, Sir Marcus Brooker. <laughs> there we go. Well done. Not doing too well this morning. Why though. is it? I am constantly disappointed by my own dynasty. <laughs> Oh, come on. Oh, yes. I'm quite well aware, Lord. Winners evacuate from the match. Winners begin to step to the left. Losers, please leave the area. <clears throat> as you all begin to watch, as a familiar face to some of you. Get back to the key, huh? The small hooded hmm. trow takes the field as two other mercenaries hmm. follow suit and shortly behind. Mm, three of them. Mm. Well, I'm out of this round. How about the rest of you? I'll bet on the one with the white head. <laughs> you all watch a strange move it take place that even causes the nobles to whisper as you watch as the small drow takes steps further back than the other two to the line. Confidence. What is this one? A strong show of confidence, to say the least. There's a thin line between confidence and stupidity, Lord Eldhart. Are you gonna bet against? Am I the only one betting? I feel like I kind of have to bet for my own kin. <laughs> I couldn't maybe bet. <laughs> 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 like the nobles the begin to whisper yeah. among themselves of this new motion of increasing the difficulty. Like to see this one. As one waves their hand in the air, allowing the match to begin. Hmm. I'd put ten silver on her. You, you want to make back your losses? You watch as the, guard, as the mercenary yeah, in the furthest right takes a low pose to take Would his shot. You take that bet? And with an eight, Ten the bolt lands low, is. barely reaching the ring of the target. Against the one with the confidence. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we're meant to do anything. I, I think you watch as the next Fine. one Let's take his pause. Almost forgetting to put the bolts into the, oh, yeah. Very well. into the crossbow as he Ten begins silver. to take aim. There's a hush to the crowd, and then mm. the whistle of the bolt flings out. Antennas low. And with a 13 landing just oh. under the ring of the t middle target. Yeah, respectable again. Strange. I'm very curious about the next one. Alright, the one with confidence. Let's see just how <clears throat> confident The crowd they are. begins to murr and whisper among each else. Right. Hopefully she's, she's a good shot. Probably see over those she's doors. got the confidence for it. <laughs> you all watch as Sarah takes her time to take the shot to aim. But with a natural one, the, t the bolt goes wide. You watch as it is a surprise to even her as it be lands on in the sand very short of the target. <laughs> you might be making your money, Lord Luckily. Oh dear. Goodness gracious. Confidence, stupidity. <laughs> yes, so we all. <laughs> maybe it was just a fluke. We'll see on the next shot. Lord, I hope so. Fluke, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if she'll walk uh, back forward. Back you watch the as the mercenary begins Surely to not. prep himself. Bit of an insult to injury if she had to. He takes a low stance for his shot. He begins to focus. And as the bolt releases in the air, <laughs> with an 11 landing high on the barrel. Mm. With an 11. Uh, <laughs> that that was was barely within the, the ring of the target. Yeah, true. At least that is that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't 
think so. You all watch as the man begins to prep himself, taking a sharp aim to the target. You see a pause to the air as the bolt rings out, and with a six, it lands on the outer ring of the target, nowhere near center. <sighs> they saved the worst for last, it would seem. <clears throat> the pressure begins to grow to in the crowd spectacular. as the breath is taken oh certainly with this whistle in the air of the small crossbow it whistles through the air and with a nine lands just outside the outer ring of the target <sighs> <sighs> Well, at least it hit something that time besides the ground. Oh, yes. Silver linings. <laughs> See what I'm looking for with this competition. The crowd begins to murmur, <laughs> even the nobles, at the pressure of the situation growing. Uh, the last shot is to be taken place. I think they definitely put too much pressure Maybe on Maybe she'll actually want to scoot up closer. I would hope so. Otherwise, she's going to need a Oh, as a mercenary, he begins to talk and aim at the same time, his focusing, shifting. And with a four, the bolt whistles out and landing very low into the sand, way off from the target. <laughs>